Hello, and welcome back. I hope that this video is finding you good health and in good spirits. I'm certainly having a lovely day. It is uh, a beautiful fall day here in Eastern Canada. And of course, my thoughts are turned to my next door neighbor in the U.S. midterm elections. And what I would like to know is whether or not the role of women is going to be significant in this midterm election. So of course, it was uh, June that women in the United States were told that they're second-class citizens and have no right to bodily autonomy um, and that their uterus belongs to the state. And at the time, I said, and the card said, that, uh, <laughs> wait for November, baby, uh, that women would uh, come back and that they would remember this in the ballot box. Well, this, of course, has been completely dismissed by uh, political class and p the chattering classes and, you know, the pundits and the pollsters and all that sort of stuff, despite the fact that we are seeing that women have been registering to vote in record numbers. Um, early voting in Georgia, women are 10 points ahead of men coming out for the early voting. Uh, we had the women in Kansas, uh, deep six, a very draconian abortion bill. I don't think that despite what you read in the polls and despite all the people that are running around telling you it's a done deal on the Republicans are in and they're going to win everything and, you know, you're just going to have to live with it. Oh, and ladies, don't worry pretty little heads about it because we're going to look after the price of gas. Unbelievable to think that women will be going into the ballot boxes this this year and not remember what happened to Roe v. Wade. And there's a lot of those very nice Republican ladies who are going into that uh, voting booth and they're going, you're not doing this to my daughter and you're not doing it to my granddaughter. We'll see, buddy. What everybody likes to forget is it still a secret ballot? So they'll come out and they'll say, oh, of course I voted Republican. We'll see. We'll see come Wednesday. Just how much women in America, including those nice Republican ladies, are willing to be told that they have no right over their body. If you are one of my returning viewers or one of the wonderful, wonderful people that make up this community as our subscribers, thank you. Thank you for being here. I love having you. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kate. I love all things tarot. Particularly, I love political tarot, but you might have already figured that out from my little opening rant. And if you are a tarot card collector, once again, we are using the fabulous, wonderful, there are not enough nice words to say about this, the New World Tarot by Lena Rodriguez and Sienna Rose. What a fabulous, fabulous deck. I'm going to do a full review on this, although I don't know if I have to, but I'm going to do a full review on this uh, for some time after the midterms. And on that note, let's cut the cards and see what we have to say about the energy that women have brought to the U.S. Uh, political scene on to the current midterm elections. First card in this reading, we have the Five of Cups and it's in a reverse position. This is a card that's about peace and gratitude. It's about optimism. It's about a healing process that's taking place. And it's a reminder for us to be grateful for what we've got. And it is easy when you are kind of surrounded or dealing with the, the kind of negative energy that we see a lot of uh, to forget that. I mean, uh, I always look at it here in this country and also in the United States. Uh, women's education is something that's considered a public good. And, you know, women are allowed to go to school. And I think there's something like eight or nine million girls around the world who will never have even the most basic education for the sole fact that they are girls and the number of girls that are uh, discriminated against on all kinds of levels. And so really in the Western world, 
we have it so much better. So, well, it's not perfect, and well, it doesn't mean we can give up. It also means that we need to be grateful for what we do have. And this has been challenged by the Page of Wands. Page of Wands. Pages are young energy. These are young people. And I think that, you know, the generations that have gone by, we've got something to learn from the young people. Their inspiration. They have got vitality. They are willing to explore new options. They're exploring new options about gender. They're about traditional sex roles. They're very creative. They're willing to educate themselves. And all pages are messengers and we will pull the good news message from this page at the end of the reading. Now, in the past position, we have the Five of Swords and it's also in a reverse position. This is about reconciliation, truth, and a peace. So, we are seeing a calming of the waters, whether or not it feels like it right now, but there is a calming. I mean, we've had the third wave of feminism started in the 1970s, 1960s, right? And it has continued on. And I think that with the loss of Roe v. Wade in the United States, um, even young women here are starting to realize that their right to bodily autonomy could be jeopardized. Like feminism isn't over. It still has something to say to young women. And in the future position, we have the three of wands reversed. This is about a lack of growth and stagnation. It's coming up against obstacles, experiencing frustrations and setbacks and delays. It's also a reminder that sometimes you got to go back to the drawing board. Um, I know it's on a slightly different topic, but you know, the people that are throwing cans of soup at uh, famous artworks and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I know they're claiming that they're drawing attention to the climate crisis. How about doing something, right? That is a little more uh, useful than Chuck and drinks and gluing yourself to the wall or whatever. And I think we've seen a lot of political theater around the issues of women, but where we've made our gains wasn't because somebody was throwing cans of soup or whatever. What we made the difference was fighting for our rights, fighting for representation, making sure that we were represented in the workplace. Uh, we've still got a lot of struggles to go. We still have, you know, Poverty is a feminist issue. These symbolic gestures uh, are not going to do it. So it's time to go back to the drawing board and start thinking about what is really going to make a difference and not just deal with somebody's sense of the, the theater. Above, overall, we have the Six of Swords. It's kind of the goal or the overall energy, the overarching energy of the sky of the reading, if you will. And the Six of Swords is about transitions moving on. It's about releasing the past and letting it go. And it's allowing yourself to heal from the past errors. And I'm going to say it right out here right now. It's not just women that have to heal from the sins of patriarchy. Men also have been damaged by this process. So it is time for us all to heal and move together. And below, underneath the foundation of the reading, we have the Five of Wands. Five of Wands is about competition and conflict. All fives are. It's about disagreements. It's about strife and tension. But the Five of Wands really is this very juvenile very uh, adolescent kind of energy. It's really not seriously get them, you know, playing argue bargy with each other, but they're so caught up in their own little uh, battles and strife that they're not paying any attention to the game that's going on around them. Uh, and I think that this is really a lot of what we have seen going on in the world. Now the advice and the impact and advice department, we have the 10 of pentacles. Ten of Pentacles, of course, about financial security. It's also about a legacy and inheritance. Um, 
I mean, it can't be physical, like a will and trust fund, but it's also about our ancestry. It's about intergenerational matters. It's what kind of world are we leaving for our children and our grandchildren? And really that that's what our focus should be, is that we have to look at what are we leaving for the coming generations. Um, I'm a boomer, I'm the last of the boomers, but you know, we have a tendency to try and suck all the oxygen out of the room, right? I am so looking forward to people of my generation and older to decide it's time to get the hell off the stage and let young people start coming up. I mean, this whole idea that, you know, people are entitled at 70, 80 years old to, to have, take the top positions and keep keep the young people down. The biggest problem with the boomers is we will not accept that we're growing older. And external influence. We have the magician, unfortunately, in a reverse position. This is the trickster. This is coyote. This is Loki. This is trickery, manipulation, and uh, pulling the wool over your eyes. And so there, and we're, holy hell, this, this election has been full of it. Um, I don't know if you've been following uh, Michael Moore's Tsunami of Truth, but, you know, his column, I think today or yesterday, was about, you know, this expectation that women are suddenly going to lose their memories going into the voting booth. And they're not going to remember that the Supreme Court justice decided they were second class citizens, not entitled to their own bodily autonomy in their own country. And that's something that's just going to freaking disappear. Well, fact of the matter is, is that women have come out to the polls in record numbers. Registration of new voters, predominantly women. Voters in Georgia in the early voting, 10% point, 10 point lead on male early voters. The women in Kansas who shut down uh, draconian anti-abortion bill. That is the thing. And women's memories are not so short that we don't remember. So this whole idea that suddenly we're willing to cash in our chips and uh, forget about the fact that we don't have full citizenship in the United States uh, because the price of gas went up or because the price of milk went up or whatever, that somehow this is something that we just have to accept because inflation. Yeah. <laughs> See you on Tuesday. Uh, hopes and fears. This is a hope card. It's death. Death is about changes. It's about the ending of old cycles and a beginning of a new cycle. It is about transformation and it is about renewal. And this is what people are pushing for is a renewal of the social contract. And this time, can we include women? That is really strong energy at this. And the final outcome card here, we have the hanged man in reverse position. And this is a card about stagnation and delays. It's about indecision. It's also about a fear of letting go. It can be about a victim mindset. Um, and that's really one of the things we can get so downtrodden because let's face it, poverty in Canada, the United States, and around the world has a woman's face on it. Women own less assets. Women make less money for jobs of equal value. Women are at the, you know, kind of the pushed out and continuously marginalized. And the male patriarchy is really threatened by all of this, which is why we're getting a lot of the backlash right now. And it's really important for us to maintain the sense of our own agency and not get caught up in that victim mindset because that will crush our aspirations. We just get to the point where we're just going to, you know, we'll, we'll just give up because what's the point? Because it's useless because it's always been this way. 
that is something that I really think that we need to guard against. Now we had a page in this, it was a challenge card, and it was page of wands. Of course, wands are about action and inspiration, uh, real fire energy, and this card is the Three of Swords in a reverse position. And this is a card that says, you've got reason to be optimistic. Yes, things are bad. Yes, things need to change. Yes, there is real important structural of objects that have to be overcome. But we have a right to be optimistic and there will be recovery. There is a better future available to us if we put our mind to it. And our shadow card in this is the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles is grounded, um, practical, generous. She's a good manager of prosperity and um, comfort, very nurturing and maternal energy. And uh, yes, a very kind of solid underneath to this reading and okay i don't know if you'd noticed because i don't have the one of the fancy cameras where i can show you the cards as i'm laying them out but we had three swords in this reading to start out three swords they weren't all upright but you know it's about the whole idea of conflict or its resolution well underneath that card i have the, the fourth Five is sitting right there and it is the five of pentacles in a reverse position so you know i'm gonna call it this is our second shadow card and this is about finding sanctuary finding hope accepting help as it's being offered it's the light at the end of the tunnel and it's rebuilding after loss i'm feeling good i think this is very good energy and this good energy is brought to us by the women of America who haven't been afraid to walk into that voting box and decide what kind of future are they going to leave for their daughters? There you go. Right there in that Ten of Pentacles, right? What kind of future are we leaving for the kids? Second class citizenship or we're going to fight back? Absolutely. So that is my take on the reading for today really positive energy. I'm really feeling good about it. If you have a question that you would like me to put to the cards, by all means, feel free to drop something in the comments. Or if you just have a comment you'd like to make, that's more than welcome. I'd love to hear from people. Um, or if you would like to ask your question anonymously or need a little more room to expand, by all means, this is my email address. And I am more than glad to, uh, pick that up and take it from there. Just my uh, response is that it will be a video response because I don't do private readings at all. And while we're here, if I could ask you to like and subscribe uh, if you found the content of this video entertaining or useful or enjoyable. Uh, it really does help our community grow. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye for now.